When I was alive, I might have been a little naughty, but after they killed me, I became something much, much worse. Here's your relook at the NECA Toys. This is the Freddy vs. Jason convention exclusive Fred Krueger. The bastard son of a hundred maniacs, Freddy grew up violent and alone. His sociopathic behavior culminated with a series of child murders in the Elm Street area of Springwood, Ohio. While standing trial for his crimes, Freddy was set free on a legal technicality. Outraged, the families of his victims sought justice themselves. Freddy Krueger was burned alive by his Elm Street neighbors. Years later, Freddy returned to terrorize the descendants of the Elm Street families in their dreams. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. We're going to be looking again at the NECA Toys Freddy vs. Jason convention exclusive Fred Krueger. That's a bit of a mouthful. I've gotten myself tons of requests to re-review this figure, primarily one from Toronto Freddy, a local cosplayer who does an excellent job of recreating the Springwood slasher, of course, after he's been burned. You may want to check him out over on Instagram. Needless to say, though, uh, the Fred Krueger figure, now keeping in mind these are the older, taller figures released from NECA. I'll do some size comparisons in a second. But Fred Krueger stands at 7.4 inches in height. Quickly, quickly switching that to centimeters, you're looking at the figure standing 18.8, .8, a little over 18.5 centimeters tall. I'll bring in a couple of figures for size comparisons, and obviously if you're going to be doing comparisons of Fred Krueger, you're probably going to want to compare him to the newer released one from NECA Toys. Still, this one is still long overdue, an ultimate release. Maybe we'll get one down the road. And also just for fun, even though not many people would consider this to be a fair comparison, I can bring in the Jackie Earl Fred Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, so you can see the difference in sizes. Clearly, as you can see in the center, the Fred Krueger, the original Fred Krueger, the convention exclusive, is not only much taller, but he's a little bit more simplified, limited in articulation, and pretty pre-posed, things of which we will be talking about in a second. Looking at the figure's accessories, he comes with two, though one is still attached to his hand. Let me show you what I mean. When I did get this initially out of the packaging, he comes attached with a doll in his hand. The doll is gripped in his hand, although it serves much better of a purpose if you keep this elastic wrapped around. I haven't removed this, nor do I really plan on taking this elastic off, because I just don't feel like he'd be able to hold the doll as well. I mean, the grip is well enough with this, certainly the thumb, but I just feel like the elastic would serve its purpose much better. The doll itself, nice to see, would be included with the Fred Krueger, a lure perhaps to bring the children to his doorstep or to his grip, of course, before he takes them away. The doll is, for its time, pretty nicely detailed, right down to the fact that they've painted in the eyelashes, the, uh, the eyeballs themselves, of course, the irises, and even like the pupils, there's a little bit of reflection of light happening on the top corners. Those are small touches that you wouldn't really have expect to be pulled off on a doll, and yet NECA Toys delivers that. Uh, I don't know really what kind of dress this is. It kind of looks like it's little tiny pink leaves or trees. I'm sure I shouldn't spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out what pattern work is actually on the doll's dress. But even like the areas of the boots are pretty nicely painted as well. Keep it in mind, this is a very small little tiny doll. Again, you can take this off if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it, I think, to the point where finally the elastic just crumbles and falls apart over the time of, you know, just the age. Because... You know, these will eventually just degrade and the elastic will break. But for the time being, like I said, I'm just going to keep it in, in place for, for right now. There's no, no need, I feel, to start going ahead and taking that off. He does come with one other, technically one other accessory. And that is the head of Freddy Krueger. Well, the burned Freddy Krueger at least. This body, and for the most part everything except for this head, was reused, and of course you could probably omit the doll as well, was reused also in the Freddy vs. Jason, Freddy vs. Jason box set, the one that had the flames for it. I parted ways with that one a long time ago and sort of regretted that I did, but this would have been the head sculpt that they would have used for it, and you can just take the head sculpt off and you pop this in place like so, and this is basically what that Freddy would have looked like, Sans Lo doll of course. 
A uh, great opportunity, of course, for NECA to simply just reuse the exact same body and just give us a brand new Robert Englund head sculpt, which I think even for its time, that's a decent looking head sculpt. We're going to do some comparisons in a second. But if you did get yourself the Freddy vs. Jason box set, this is essentially what you would be getting. I really wasn't a big fan of Freddy's makeup design in the film. Primarily, it was this little kind of, I don't know what you would call it, like a little ravine in between the middle of his nose. It really stood out. I don't know why they had to necessarily put that in there. But overall, I mean, the figure still does look pretty good, actually, for the time period in which this came out. The fedora is not removable, just in case you're curious. Painted nicely still. It's got some lighter browns added to a more otherwise dark brown hat. Again, like the makeup, the face, the scarring, the makeup, of course, in the film, still does look pretty good on this figure, I have to admit. The eyes look good. I even like the discoloration on those mangly-looking teeth. Seems like we can actually even count them on one hand. Yeah, we can. There's, there's eight teeth, four on the top, four more disgusting ones along the bottom. But obviously, if you did pick up this figure for yourself, the likelihood you're probably going to be displaying it with this particular head sculpt is slim to none. As a nice touch, though, the peg that they use for the bottom of the head is actually part of Freddy's spinal cord. Whereas if you look at Fred Krueger's, it's simply just a straight out peg. You can remove the head off just like you would from the Freddy vs. Jason set. So it does look like they painted it just to resemble, of course, the severed off head like he appears in the film. You're not obviously going to see that either, because you're probably going to then take the head. It's weird, though, that they would then have painted the bottom of Fred Krueger's head. I mean, because in the film, he doesn't get decapitated, obviously, looking like this. He does as Freddy. Strange that they would then paint the underside to make it look like a severed off head. Anyways, I'm just going to put this into place, pop this into place like so. It's very easy to replace Peg as well. It does, of course, limit the possibility, just really then allowing the figure to rotate back and forth, and that's really it, simply just because of the way they peg that in place. Obviously, we're going to do some comparisons with the newer Freddy. I say newer Freddy. This one isn't so super new. I'm just going to rotate the head on this one so you guys can see. There we go. And put the figures side to side. Now, one is technically from Freddy's Dead, so this one really would be coming before this one here. But you can see, though, the difference between the head sculpts. In a way, though, I mean, I do feel like that's still a good head sculpt that they used for the original release. This one does have more of the things noted for Freddy Krueger, like his nose. I feel the nose is a little bit better on the newer release. This one still being the slightly newer release. But the paint job is really nicely done on this one. You can see the wrinkles, the hair is slightly darker, but there's definitely more coloring added to his complexion. Whereas this one does always kind of came across more like a softened, faded looking uh, paint job. See them, see them side to side. The Freddy's dead Freddy Krueger, Fred Krueger, would have the more lighter colored hair. Where the Fred Krueger would have more dark brown hair. I will put that figure to the side. Oh, uh, one other thing too. We'll just bring this one in. I know I keep teasing you. The sweaters, very different in color. The pants, very different also in color. This one really went the dark color route of giving us almost like an evergreen tree green and an equally dark burgundy. Whereas this one here still has the more traditional Fred Krueger colors, the lighter red, the lighter green. It's definitely a very dark, stark contrast when you really look at them side to side. Uh, one thing I'm really happy to see with this particular figure, I've had it so long and yet still the blades are fully intact. I mean, look how long these blades are. These are one of the longest blades he has in the films. And uh, for this being such thin plastic, I'm really surprised it's held out as long as it has. I've really just kept this in totes in a zippy Ziploc bag. I'm really surprised, actually, that the blades haven't broken yet. They're painted in silver, each one of the individual blades, as well as the top plates are done in a dark copper color, with the glove being more of a khaki brown. We spin it around and you can see all the full details of the individual fingers, the ones that are exposed, as well as the open uh, palm area of his glove that's been removed as well. Nice detailing done. I almost added a bit of a semi-gloss sheen to it, so it has a bit of a slick, sweaty look to it. Although he doesn't have it anywhere on his face. It would have been nice, actually, if they had added a little bit to his brow, at least, if anything else. Moving a little bit further down, he's got 
considerably baggy pants. Freddy Krueger does have baggy pants, but I don't feel certainly to this extent. It feels like he's stolen these pants from somebody else. One of the problems with this particular figure, and even like the earlier Freddy vs. Jason figure release as well, being that of course they are the exact same mold, is the way that they've sculpted the feet. This one is firmly flat, while this one here is bent up. He's arched his foot, which causes problems then to stand the figure. Freddy Krueger from the FVJ release would have been pegged into the stand that would have had, of course, the flames going around it. Because this was a standalone release, Freddy, Fred Krueger doesn't come with anything. It does now cause the problems that this sculpt would have created in the first place. It does cause some difficulties getting the figure to stand. He only really firmly plants on one foot and then sort of just teeters and balances on this one right here. It's a shame that this one doesn't have a flat foot either. I mean, you can use display stands, but these older NECA figures use the larger peg holes. So it's next to impossible to find older stands to, of course, accommodate these figures if you still had them in your collection. Nice detailing done to the pants. I mean, it almost looks like they've been soaked in oil. Not only do they have a semi-gloss look to them, but they also have like a really dark discoloration that it almost looks like they literally painted it in dark black oil. Articulation on this guy is very limited. Let's go ahead and look at that right now. His head rotates all the way around, technically. This would, in the real world, of course, kill Fred Krueger. Forget setting him on fire, just twist his head all the way around, and just like that, he'd be dead. We shouldn't joke about that. Uh, the arms rotate all the way around. Um, they're kind of weird the way that they've done them in the sense that everything on these are swivel hinges. So in some places, it does make it look correct to the way, of course, they've sculpted the figure. When you do rotate it any which way other than that, you're obviously going to start seeing areas where it looks like his arm has been separated. Some very sinister magician has severed his arm in half or cut his arm right off. Um, you can see as you do rotate it, there's only a few ways that you can actually place the arm while it still looks natural. I mean, I don't know why you would want to display your Fred Krueger looking like this, for example, but even like if you have it just like mid-arm, what's going on here? This just doesn't make sense whatsoever. So really with this, there's only a few ways that you can actually pose the figure. Um, if you have it like, like this, actually like this, it seems like the stripes don't even line up with one another. I guess the plan isn't really that they're supposed to anyways. It almost seems like the arm should go this way, but then you would only have to then bring the arm around this way. And then, of course, this would be the way that NECA originally intended to have Freddy Krueger displayed. I mean, it's fine and good to be displayed like this. I actually kind of, in a way, like to display it with the arm down. And then you can bring the arm down this way. But it kind of almost looks like he wants to scratch his side. Like he's got a little itchy, itchy itch on the side of his torso. So I guess really the best way to display it is have the arm up, have the arm this way, and display Freddy Krueger like this. I mean, that's not hiding anything. If I was a child, I would not be walking up to grab the doll from Freddy's hand, clearly seeing what he's got planned for the top there. Anyways, for the rest of his articulation, he has a swivel cut right here on the, on the waist. And then he does have articulation here also in the boots. You can see them swivel back and forth slightly. Only slightly. Nice discoloration also added to the boots. A copper of brown mixed with some darker brown really does make those boots look old and, like, worn. Overall, it's not a bad-looking figure. I mean, obviously, it does feel dated by today's standards. Not only does he have a difficult time of standing, but, uh, of course, like I said, because he's pre-posed means that the figure is always going to have difficulties. You're never going to really be able to pose him in a way that you really want to. A lot of times, even just to compensate for him to stand and balance correctly, I've actually got to have to have the arm down. Now, you could use, again, a display stand. Let's just reach off. I happen to have one from NECA before. But again, like the peg is way too big or way too small for the size of the hole. So it doesn't even really properly fit him in the first place. So when you do get a figure like this, for example, you may find yourself actually having to rest it against something so that Freddy Krueger isn't going to fall off and break any one of these individual blades in his gloves. Again, depending on which way you went your route of picking up a Fred Krueger, there was two different options available. This one fits a little bit more accordingly, I suppose, to the ultimate figures that we've looked at before. But there's something certainly charming about this one. And this one obviously is a little bit harder to come by, being that it was a convention exclusive after all.
having to sadly resort to cheating here in Final Looks, I'm using actually a waist clip that came included with the dog alien, also from NECA Toys. This for at least serves the purpose of holding and grabbing on to Fred Krueger's thigh. That does seem a bit awkward, doesn't it? But at least it guarantees that the figure isn't going to fall over. The figure already has difficulty standing. He teeters and totters a bit on the one foot because he's pre-posed. And because if you're going to have the arm up, putting him on a turntable is probably not the best ideas around. I don't want this figure to fall over and certainly not break those blades because knock on wood, they haven't broken so far. The figure does stand out a bit like a sore thumb, especially if you're going to be picking this one up and displaying it with your Freddy Kruegers now. He's bigger than the others, he doesn't have the articulation that the others have, and he is also pre-posed. In other words, when you do display him, you can put his arm down, which I started at the beginning of this review, or you can have his arm up as I finished off this review here in Final Looks. But unfortunately, there's only so many things that you can actually do with this one arm without it looking like his arm's been cut, one of the biggest problems with the older cult classics figures. Uh, being, of course, the fact that he does have limitations, there's still somewhat a charm, I have to say, for these older figures. I can certainly see why people wanted to see a re-review of him, because he's still, when it's all said and done, a decent-looking rendition of Freddy Krueger. Fred Krueger, I might even go as far to say that the head sculpt might even be a little bit better than the one that we had gotten later on. The paint, I could certainly say, if anything, is a lot better than the newer release. This one does reuse, of course, the same body that came included with the Freddy vs. Jason box set. A set and still by the, by today is one I regret parting ways with. I should have held on to that. I really should have held on to a lot of my older horror figures. But c'est la vie. We do, of course, make mistakes in our lives, decide we want to part ways with things, and then realize later we regret doing so. I still held on to this one, and thank goodness that I did. Would I display it with my other Ultimate Freddies? No, I wouldn't. But I would display this one on his own. Of course, for that, I would probably bring in a display stand because, as I said, I don't want this figure to fall over. I don't want to break anything that's on him because, as it stands right now, nothing has been broken for all the years that I've kept him stored away. Oh, I've just jinxed things by saying that. Either way, though, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the convention exclusive Fred Krueger from Freddy vs. Jason. All said and done, still a nice painted figure, though again, he's very limited on what you can actually do with him. Uh, also, if you guys want to check out Toronto Freddy, one of the viewers of mine that of course recommended me re-reviewing this guy, I'll put some of the links down below in the video description if you guys want to check him out. Also, if you're new to this channel and liking the content that you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below. Consider the idea as well of hitting that bell notification. And consider the idea of coming back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when new videos will be found on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.